The Subanon. The name derives from two words. Suba is river, while the suffix non denotes a place of origin. Once upon a time, the Subanons, the ancient inhabitants of Sambuanga, were scattered over the plains of Pagadian. Today, their culture has been replaced by the culture of the migrants. Doubtless, the arrival of the migrants and their continual influx into Sambuanga were the forces that drove the Subanon to the hills. The vast expanse of hill country beckons from the main road, through stretches of grassland and forest, and then down through a river. It is on the banks of this very river, in the village of Dampalan in Pagadian, that the ritual of the Boklog will take place. In Tampalan, most of the Subanon we met appeared to have lost contact with their material culture. But if they appeared marginalized at first, a closer glimpse into the village revealed their constant animism. They called their supreme god as Diwata. And then they celebrate uh, Gampang, which is uh, to appease the spirit, to remove uh, evil spirits in the community for good health. And for successes in life, they uh, celebrate Baklog. They still uh, believe that their Diwata talks to them, that they can talk with the Diwata. The biggest structure in the village of Dampalan is the Sambahan, a shrine where the music is played and rituals are performed. The agungs of the tribe are kept here, facing the Salangsang or Bibalay. Here, the Sinalumpong is performed, a ritual that honors their unseen god, the Diwata Megdubaya. In the community of Dampalan, the ancient knowledge of the Buklog ritual is preserved in Bailan and Sagang Uya. As a Balyan, my main job is to perform the Buklog and to prepare the Bibalay, Sinulambi, and Chinulampong, which will be used in the red one. Wherever there is sickness in the community, people will come to me for help. To cure the ailments, I usually give them roots or leaves or plants. But sometimes, there are sickness which cannot be cured by leaves alone. In this case, I have to perform the binokid, a kind of buklog meant to give remedy to those who are sick. The Baklog is a ritual that encompasses all the beliefs and philosophies of traditional Subanon society. The Baklog is at once a spiritual exercise, just as it is a community feast. But in its many stages, we see a complete ritual that includes offerings, prophecies, omens, and an acknowledgement of the beneficent and malevolent features of the Subanon gods. Boklog is the tradition that we celebrate so that we will have good harvest, good health, and more prosperity for the whole community. Before our ancestors always performed the Boklog yearly, they will take care a lot of pigs and save a lot of rice. This will be used to feed the many people who come and help in the construction of the Boklog. With all the expenses, there are only a few who, who can afford to have a Buklog. Buklog is a Thanksgiving celebration. There is no fixed calendar for the Buklog. It is a feast that adapts itself to a variety of reasons. Sickness, health, Thanksgiving, an attempt to placate angry spirits and to ward off impending tragedies. 
The name of the festival is drawn from the booklog, a structure that is at once a musical instrument and a performance space. To construct a booklog and to perform on it means that the entire community must prepare for the ritual, from the first act of wood gathering to the energetic finale. The first part of the festivity is the Kano Sinulampong, a rite in which the villagers ask the Biwata for permission to gather wood for the construction of the booklog. The second part is the Sinalumpong Memata, in which the villagers go to the woods to gather the materials for the booklog. Mamutul na, bukuhat na lulugan. Ang lulugan, in the Mimata, the first tree that will be cut will be used for dulugan. Before cutting down a tree, we have to offer a chicken first by striking it on the tree. After cutting, we will bring the log home and start constructing the dulugan. The following day, we will start gathering the other materials. When we have enough materials, we will start the construction of the buklog. These two stages of the Buklog ritual mark the Subanon's inherent reverence for nature and his affinity with the land. After the wood and the materials have been gathered, the Subanon's head for the riverbanks for the third stage of the ritual, the Gampang. In the Gampang, the Subanon's divide the environment into symbolic spaces each acknowledging a specific force in their lives. The river is the Subanon universe, and the currents are the forces that affect their lives. On the river banks, the altars are prepared to the gods who watch over the Subanons. <laughs> To the benevolent deities is dedicated the Bibalai, a structure of branches and stone. The Bailan and Sagang Uya presides over the erection of the altar. The four posts are divided by a platform of bamboo slats, which serve as the altar for the gods. <laughs> An important accessory of the Bibalai is the Salangsang. These are seven altars created from split branches. Each one will hold a specific offering. The structure of these altars recall the shape of ritual containers used to hold severed heads among Southeast Asia's head hunting tribes. For the Subanon, these baskets hold the eggs, the salt, and the rice grains offered to the gods. Opposite the Salangsang, the Bailan creates the Lumpaga, a smaller shrine dedicated to the malevolent spirits. It is a quality of animists that in their rituals they acknowledge both the forces of good and evil, crediting to both the power to change and affect lives. <laughs> After the creation of these two structures, a pair of abaca ropes are stretched over the current of the river to block any malevolent forces that may be arriving to ruin the Baklog performance.
Then, to complement the metaphor for the Subanon community, sacrifices are made. to the dancing of the bailan, who moves with his assistant in circles of seven around both altars. In his hands, he holds a porcelain bowl, which he strikes incessantly. The clear ringing calls the spirits to attend. His other prop is a sheaf of dried coconut fronds. The image is strikingly similar to the Babaylan rituals of the Palawan. Specific portions of a sacrificed pig are placed in the Bibalai, an offering to the good spirits. A humbler offering of chicken is placed in the Lumpaga for the malevolent spirits. Then in the river, a small raft is set to float. In it is a chicken, an offering to the unseen spirits of nature. The chicken's survival in the river's current augurs the community's future response to coming trials. And with this final augury comes the end of the gampang and the beginning of a new phase of the buklog ritual. After four days of preparation, the climax of the ritual begins. The gabat is the ritual chant that solemnly announces the building of the buklog. The chanters announce to all that the preparatory rituals have been observed and that the community is now ready to build the buklog. To understand the buklog, one must think of a giant trampoline constructed of bamboo. Underneath the jumping platform is connected a resonator, which strikes at a solid log to create a sonorous, pounding sound. Similar concepts in other Austronesian groups involve building large structures, which create a noise or sound when a group of people jump or dance on it. The buklog is one of these structures. Anthropologists say, that the concept of creating a communal sound is a way of frightening away evil spirits and calling on the good. The buklog structure is made of the following parts. The dulugan is the resonator, made of a sounding board.
The fatao is a cross piece that creates the sound when it strikes the dulugan. The posts of the platform are called the fasek, supported by the braces or sulai. The ligesen are joint supports which keep the posts in place. The platform is called the Selasag. The railing is called the Dlabat. The platform is made all the sturdier by the gatung and the siguagan. The construction of the entire booklog is done during the night after the completion of the gampang. all through the night until the dawn when the entire structure is ready for the dancers. With the dawn, a ritual similar to the Sinalumpong is performed. The offerings are raised for the spirits to bless the structure and the sound that it will produce. Then the children of the community are brought forward to touch the resonators, which are considered sacred totemic objects. And then the dancing commences. The rhythmic movement is called the megba, which is really more of a joyful jumping, following an easy rhythm. Three steps and a hop, all which produce the sonorous pounding heard below.
But up here on the platform, no solemn pounding is heard. Only the laughter of the people as the merriment of the buklog continues. The dancing continues the whole day and ends with a tempusan. In the ritual, an oratory is performed by the Datu, who thanks the community for their support. A gift of bananas marks the end of the festivity as the Subanon from other communities head home, satisfied that the spirits have heard their call and that another season will pass in peace, good health, and contentment. At first glimpse, it seems sad that such a ritual should be performed without the accessories that we have come to associate with the tribal cultures. The colorful costumes, the weaves, the accessories. But for the Subanon of Dampalan, there is more to their survival than just local color. And though they live very much the way their ancestors did, life in the late 20th century is fraught with problems. One day, hopefully, the culture will come alive once again in a prestige feast that captures the ancient vitality of these people. Would that the Subanon once again find their voice and their heritage. And in finding these, the Subanon rediscover their strength, their beauty. Only then will the Buklog be truly an answered prayer. Thank you.